Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. What I'm going to speak about today is the long thoracic nerve. We're going to speak about an injury to the long thoracic nerve. It can be an entrapment of the long thoracic nerve or a neuropathy of the long thoracic nerve. When I was in chiropractic college, we always used to call it a lesion of a nerve. But I'm going to speak about this so you know how to recognize the signs and symptoms of this condition and you know how to prevent this condition and you know how to properly treat this condition. The long thoracic nerve is a nerve in the upper body. It transmits nerve signals from cervical spinal nerve roots C5, C6, and C7. It's a fairly long nerve. It's anywhere from 20 to 22 centimeters, obviously depending on the person's size. 20 to 22 centimeters is about a little bit less than 8 inches to a little bit more than 8.5 inches a little bit of conversion there from uh, metrics to our american standard system but the long thoracic nerve like i said it's a fairly long nerve it travels in between the first rib and the clavicle goes down through the axilla and innervates the serratus anterior muscle it does not have a sensory innervation to any of the skin, but it is, it, again, it, it is the motor innervation for the serratus anterior muscle. The serratus anterior muscle is located in the first eight to nine ribs, some people eight, some people nine. It originates in the front part in the anterior lateral aspect of the first eight to nine ribs. It wraps around those ribs and it inserts onto the anterior surface of the medial border of the shoulder blade. So it inserts, it travels all the way around the rib cage. It, it attaches to the front part of the shoulder blade very close to the border of the shoulder blade on the edge where it's closer to the spine. It's Concentric action, the concentric action of the serratus anterior muscle is shoulder blade protraction. So it's this, it pulls the shoulder blade away from the spine. So remember that because that's very important when we're looking at the signs or symptoms of an entrapment of the long thoracic nerve. The mechanism of injury of the long thoracic nerve entrapment or a neuropathy of the long thoracic nerve is several different things. First of all, a sudden unexpected upper extremity traction. So it's a, a, a pulling on the arm very powerfully and very quickly. Also, it can be where it is what's called backpacker syndrome, where it's just compression of the collarbone, which in medical terms is called a clavicle, where it's pushing that downwards for a prolonged period of time, causing entrapment of the nerve. Also, it can be if there is shoulder depression and a contralateral cervical flexion. So if the shoulder's down and there is a contraction of the cervical muscles that moves the neck into the opposite side into a lateral flexion so those are the three main mechanisms of injury of this condition now it's time for the disclaimer i have to put this in in my videos it's extremely important please do not try to self-diagnose yourself if you have an injury or if you have a medical condition please see a medical professional do not try to self-diagnose yourself. Do not use this video in place of seeing a medical professional because it does not replace seeing a medical professional. Do yourself a big favor, get the proper diagnosis, get an evaluation, get the examination that you need. If you need imaging, if you need testing, please get that taken care of. Getting the proper diagnosis will help you in your recovery because it points you in the correct direction so that you can recover from whatever injury that you have. If it is an entrapment of the long thoracic nerve or if it is another condition. So please do yourself a favor and see a medical professional. Do not try to self-diagnose yourself and do not use this video as a replacement for seeing a medical professional. Symptoms of a long thoracic nerve entrapment include pain in the neck, shoulder, and scapula area. It can be very vague in its 
location. Obviously, weakness in the serratus anterior muscle. Any movement that causes traction on the nerve and also weakness in shoulder flexion. Shoulder flexion is the motion where we are bringing, where our arm is in front and we raise the arm. That is shoulder flexion. So there may be weakness in that motion. Also, there may be what's called winging of the scapula. If you look at the scapula from the back, especially the inferior inner border, the inferior medial border in medical terms, the area of the scapula, the lowest point where it's closer to the spine may be winging outwards. And that is a sign that there is something going on with the serratus anterior muscle and it can be an entrapment or neuropathy of the nerve, the long thoracic nerve that innervates the serratus anterior muscle. So again, the symptoms of an entrapment of the long thoracic nerve. First of all, weakness in the serratus anterior muscle. If it's long standing, there can be atrophy in those muscles. There can be pain in the shoulder, in the neck, and in the scapula. Usually that pain is increased with any activity that causes traction on the nerve. And then, like I said, weakness in shoulder flexion and that weaning of the inferior medial border of the scapula. A good way to observe the possible winging of the inferior medial border of the scapula is by watching your shoulders while you're in a push-up position. Obviously, it's difficult to do, so you may have a friend do it, your doctor will probably do it, uh, you could have someone videotape you, but you want to look at how your shoulder blade moves while you're doing a push-up. If you have pain or if you are unable to do a push-up because of the pain or symptoms or weakness, then you can do a push-up up against the wall. Those are very simple to do. Hands up against the wall and push the body out. and have someone observe your scapula to see if there was winging of the inferior medial border of the scapula. Because again, that is a sign that there is something going on with the serratus anterior muscle. So have someone do that. This is a, one of the movement pattern tests by Dr. Yonda, or Yonda, I guess is the proper way to say it. I apologize for saying it incorrectly. But it's a movement pattern test where you're looking at what is called the scapulothoracic joint or the scapulothoracic joint. Uh, scapulo thoracic joint is the correct way to say it the first time I said scapula but what you want to do is look at that area have someone observe that have someone take a video of it or have your doctor take a look at that area to see how it moves when you are doing a push-up because that is one of the telltale signs that there is something going on with the serratus anterior muscle Recovery from a nerve entrapment condition is usually faster and more complete when the injury is mild and there's a shorter duration of the entrapment. So take action immediately. Also, one of the things that will help you to recover quicker is to modify, lessen, or eliminate the activity that is causing this condition. So if it's an exercise, if it's some type of training that you're doing, modify it, correct your technique, or just eliminate that altogether. And because it's going to help you to eliminate, if you are eliminate a contributing factor, then it's going to help you to eliminate the impingement on the nerve. So you want to take action as quickly as you can. Do not hesitate. Again, when an injury occurs, you want to take action immediately. Nerve impingement conditions, when not treated properly, can cause a negative sequela of events. Weakness, numbness, tingling, burning, atrophy, all these things can lessen your function. So you want to take action immediately if you suspect that you have an entrapment of the long thoracic nerve. If you do receive a diagnosis of a long thoracic nerve entrapment, I recommend you see a doctor of chiropractic. Hopefully you got your evaluation from a doctor of chiropractic because we are medical professionals. We can do the evaluation. We can diagnose. But if you did not, I do recommend that you see a doctor of chiropractic for treatment. And if you did, please continue with the doctor of chiropractic for 
treatment. The objective of chiropractic care is to restore proper skeletal motion. When we do this, this helps to eliminate nerve impingement. So we optimize nerve flow. Chiropractic adjustment is the restoration of proper skeletal motion and it will help to optimize nerve flow. Now what you want to do to help yourself to recover from an entrapment of the long thoracic nerve is to eliminate, like I said, contributing factors to this condition. So we want to eliminate the extrinsic factors, like I just spoke about, which are things that are causing activities that you're doing that are causing this condition, but you want to also eliminate the intrinsic factors. There can be a strength imbalance where muscles are tight, other muscles are weak, and so that's causing a strength imbalance. You also want to stretch the muscles that are tight, decrease the muscle tension. Many times when someone has this condition, they need to stretch a great area of the shoulder, a very large area. There may be tightness in these pectoralis muscles. There may be tightness in the posterior aspect of the shoulder. So you want to check all of that and you want to stretch those areas. You also want to strengthen the muscles that pull the shoulder blades backwards, the muscles that do the opposite of the serratus anterior. You also want to strengthen the serratus anterior muscle. So you want to overall do, do exercises that are going to help to improve your function, help to improve or eliminate any strength imbalances, help to improve the motion of the shoulder and the shoulder blade area. Now, I, whenever I say improve, I pull my shoulder blades back because I'm thinking about activities and exercises that strengthen what's called the scapular retractor muscles, where you can do exercises that will help to strengthen these, this group of muscles, including the rhomboid major, the rhomboid minor, the middle trap, and the lower trap. So you do exercises that retract the scapula because remember, the serratus anterior muscle protracts the scapula. So we want to strengthen the serratus anterior muscle, but we want to also strengthen the opposing muscles. So you can do exercises like roll-ups. I'm going to have a video attached to this video where I explain roll-ups, another episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report, where you are strengthening the neck, which is the cervical spine, the mid-back, which is the thoracic spine, and the scapular retractor muscles in one exercise. It's a fantastic exercise. I highly recommend it. Also, there are other exercises called Brugger's exercise. You can do scapular retraction exercises. You can do pull-up bar scapular retraction exercises. If you can do those without pain, build up to that exercise and go ahead and do them. It should help you a lot. So you want to try to eliminate the contributing factors and you want to develop overall good posture and good movement patterns. Remember I was talking about the test, the uh, Yonda movement pattern test. You want to do everything you can to correct that. So you want to eliminate any weaknesses. You want to stretch any muscles that are tight. It's going to help to improve the motion of the scapulothoracic joint and that will help to lessen the symptoms of a long thoracic nerve entrapment. You can also perform range of motion exercises. Anytime there's an issue with the shoulder where there is a lack of strength or nerve impingement, in most cases, range of motion exercises will help a great deal. Just work through a pain-free range of motion. Go very slow and increase your motion very gradually, and that will help you with this condition. Also, like I said, the stretching exercises. Whenever you do stretching exercises, hold a mild comfortable stretch. Do not overstretch. Hold a mild comfortable stretch. Stretching the cervical spine, stretching the upper thoracic spine will help. Because remember in the beginning when I spoke about the anatomy, I said that the long thoracic nerve transmits nerve signals from C5, C6, and C7. That's in the cervical spine, the lower part of the cervical spine. So many times stretching the cervical spine and lessening muscle tension in that area may help with this type of condition. So just a good general overall routine where you are eliminating muscle tension by doing very mild stretches and you are doing range of motion exercises to increase the range of motion in your cervical spine, in your thoracic spine, in your shoulder joints, 
especially the glenohumeral joint and the scapulothoracic joint, and then also the strengthening exercises, which I already mentioned. Thank you for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Please feel free to visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on my book, and you could also connect with me on other social media platforms. Please subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. Also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and please feel free to leave questions, comments, suggestions, or feedback in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching today's video on long thoracic nerve entrapment. I appreciate you viewing this video, and always remember, train hard, train smart, utilize nutritional strategies that work for you, stay injury free, and accomplish your